I know, you probably had enough as well of these unrealistic videos trying to break the M2 MacBook Air in ways that you never imagined would be possible. <laughs> so I decided to make a series of videos showing you a little bit more realistic use cases for this beautiful M2 MacBook Air. This is the second video in this series, and today we're gonna do some studying. I'm Alex, and I do down-to-earth tech videos. This is the M2 MacBook Air with 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU, 16-gig RAM and 256-gig SSD. I gotta be careful though for this video not to turn into an app review, but I installed a multitude of student apps on this MacBook Air, but also a couple of leisure type apps and games because I know studying is not the only thing students do. At least it wasn't when I was a student. In general though, just to give you an idea, I tried two, sometimes three different student apps that do the same thing, just to see how they would behave on the MacBook Air. And I did that because I appreciate that not every app has been optimized for the Apple Silicon. I installed some browser plugins as well, all of this to try and replicate a student use case as much as possible, and ultimately to produce a realistic review for you. I could do the whole YouTuber thing and try to break this machine, and you know, which I will do as well in, in a different way. I'll probably try and do some video editing, and that will be fun to do just to see what the limits are for this machine, but I'll leave that for another time. Right now, I'll try and keep this relevant for you. Another thing to bear in mind is that you may spot my internal storage filling up and start to be worried about the 256 gig SSD, and I don't blame you for being concerned. After I installed all of these apps, I was left with about 100 gig of free space. But just be aware that there's quite a bit here that is gonna be redundant for a lot of people, right? As you would probably not choose a lot of the same apps to run one thing, right? You probably choose one app that does it. And depending on what you're studying, a lot of these apps may not be relevant for you. So I think on balance, 256 gig SSD drive is plenty for a lot of people for a long time. Right, let's do a quick run through of the apps that I have installed on this MacBook Air. Then I'll go through a bit of a day in the life using the MacBook Air throughout the day as a regular student would. This is not gonna be an entire day in the life that you know takes you through the, the, like the 24 hours of being a student. However, this is based on suggestions that you gave me in my previous videos, and I really appreciate you for that as well. So I hope they bear relevance. I really like Google Chrome as my browser, and I have multiple browser plugins that I installed. Chrome itself isn't that heavy on the memory, right, or Safari, but it's only when you start to have lots of tabs open, lots of plugins running, that's when you start to see memory creeping up. We will go through that in more detail shortly, but a quick rule of thumb for me is that 20 tabs are interactive websites, right? They're not just kind of static websites, it's kind of interactive. They'll take anywhere between three and four gigs of RAM. As you can see here, when I closed Chrome, which was running 18 tabs at the time, the memory utilization went down as expected. And when I brought Chrome back up, we can see that the memory you know, started to creep up again. And all of this is normal, but I didn't just reopen Chrome and left it because not all websites will refresh when you do that. So I refreshed every single tab to load those pages again, as you would when you're busy working as a student, right? You're not just kind of leaving the tabs open, you're probably switching between them. I wanted to get that browsing experience out of the way and how much memory it uses because this is really important if you're considering the eight gig as an option, right? The eight gig RAM on the MacBook Air. I really think the 8GB RAM is gonna be absolutely fine for a lot of people, as long as you're smart in how you manage your tabs. And there are some great apps that I discovered here that allows you to save the information that you want that you found on a browser and work on it offline later. Not just on your Mac, but across your other devices as well, Android or iOS. Something else that I installed straight away was Alfred, and thanks Richard for the recommendation. Alfred has something called a power pack, which allows you to customize actions and you know comes with a ton of useful features. I barely scratched the surface of what Alfred can do. You know, I feel that this app is gonna be really powerful. As a student, you wanna be efficient with your time, right? And be organized with the things that you've got in the machine. So the ability to quickly find things and not only that, but relate them to other documents or ideas becomes super powerful. And you might also want to automate some workflows, right? Especially if there's something that you're doing all the time, it's something quite repetitive and Alfred will help you with that. I've also installed Pocket, which is a, an awesome app as well for saving things for later. Again, this alone could help you keeping that memory usage down because of the, the number of tabs that you no longer need to keep open. From a note-taking perspective, right, this is what every student will, will care about a lot. So I got Evernote, Notion, Noto, Notability, and I tried them all. And I also installed some apps used for Markdown, which again, I think you really care about if you're a student. So I have 
Ulysses, which I actually use a lot myself for writing scripts like this one. And I also installed Rome Research and Obsidian, which were new ones to, that were recommended to me. By running the M2 MacBook Air as a student throughout the whole day, and hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the M2 MacBook Air is really capable of running. But also in terms of multitasking, right? I wasn't really closing any apps or anything like that. But some of these apps are quite memory hungry as well. And for extra realism, I haven't rebooted the machine since I got it on Friday, which was four days before this recording. Starting the day with the battery at 100%, I did some reading, of course, in the morning, right? So kind of some light reading, some articles that I had saved from the day before, keeping the usage of RAM quite low as well by saving some of these articles for reading later on. By the way, I decided to use the MacBook Air throughout the day without charging, just to replicate as much as possible those days where you might not wanna carry your laptop charger and to see how far the battery would last as well. I also didn't mess with the settings in the battery. I know you can go to low power mode, so bear that in mind throughout the video, right? I left the display pretty much at 70% throughout the day. I did increase it to 100 for a couple of hours maybe when I was watching content in the evening or playing games. For most of the day, I had about four to five levels of brightness that I could get before it go to like full brightness. So I don't recall needing to go to beyond 65, 70% of brightness throughout the day, even though I'm, I'm here in daylight because I wasn't really watching a lot of content during the day. And for the work that I was doing, 65 to 70% brightness was perfect. But I will do another review using low power mode just to see how it compares. For these initial sort of couple of hours of the day where I just did some reading, Google Chrome was used a lot, right? I was just kind of do some browsing. Uh, Pocket was used a lot because I was saving stuff into it. But those are the main things that I was doing. And the beauty of these bookmark apps, and I'll leave you some recommendations here, they allow you to kind of save stuff to read later, is that despite me having dozens of clip pages here, you will only load into memory, if you like, once you start opening them and working on them. So working on three to five articles at once, you know, offline articles, used about 100 to 200 meg, kind of, kind of a negligible amount, really. But the great thing is that it's in a much easy to use interface and very easy to find articles, right? You know, you can tag items, making it a breeze to find them later, but they're also more visible, right? When you're using tabs in Chrome, they start becoming smaller and smaller as the more tabs you've got. And for extra productivity points, you can use Obsidian here, for example, to connect those ideas, to connect those articles and build a very powerful knowledge base. And that in the long run is much better than using the browser, right? Out of sight, out of mind. And I appreciate that you can group tabs in Chrome and you can color code them even and name them. Ain't nobody got time for that. I then went on to do some writing, which as a student, you'd be doing a lot of. I wrote a 2000 word script, which took me the best part of an hour. You know, it was for a review, but I guess it's kind of a slightly shorter version than an undergraduate sort of essay, for example. Mostly I used Ulysses for that writing. And what I like about Ulysses is the interface. It's super clean, allows me to really focus on what I'm writing. It's also quite dark, so I like how easy it is on my eyes. I then did some emails and opened my calendar to see what classes I had for the day. I went on to my first real class, which was around computer science. Now I have to say a huge thank you to Michael here who provided me with some instructions on how to do this bit. Not only did Michael provide me with instructions, he recorded them and sent them to me via email. So what you're seeing here is 100% realistic, hopefully, <laughs> to what a student will do. I received loads of suggestions from you, which tells me that this machine is gonna be very popular with students. So I will try and include them as much as possible, if not today, in future videos as well. But I am using IntelliJ IDEA as the IDE software, but I guess you could use other apps like RStudio or similar. I did download RStudio, which was another recommended by another viewer, and I do have it running. And I actually tried to do some tests with it, but I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how to use R. I know what it is and I know what it's for. But yeah, there wasn't much point in this test. So the test that Michael sent me, which was a program to replicate this generation of fractal images, is perfect. I was able to generate these beautiful images here using some basic knowledge of code. But you can see here that the IDE software is taking 2.5 gig of RAM. Closing the IDE and starting it again does drop that to 1.25 gig though. Not really sure why that happened, but again, I wanted to replicate what a student might do. And Maybe they don't always close and reopen the IDE, so that kind of starts to, to, to build up more, more RAM. But running the same code from a fresh session of IDE only used 1.2 gig of RAM for the IDE and another 1.7 gig of RAM for the JVM. Okay, with my brain a little exhausted of all this coding, you're only seeing a snippet here, of course, it was a YouTube video that I don't wanna be here for hours, but I did spend a good hour or so doing this. And before I talk about the rest of the day, just a quick reminder here, because YouTube, you know, can be really weird sometimes and not recommend this video to the wider audience, unless you interact with it. So if you enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up 
Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future, you know, down in the comments there. And if you like my stuff, it'd be awesome if you subscribe too. The benefit to you is that I'm here at least once a week with another tech video for you. So I took a break and decided to watch some content and play some games for another hour. Again, I didn't close anything. I just left things running as you would normally. And to be honest with you, I don't know if this is what people do during the day, but I'll assume you have a break at some point. The battery on the MacBook Air did drop to about 60% at this point, but it was now nearly 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And after all that work, I wasn't surprised. Actually, 60% I thought was really good. I watched some Netflix as well and played some games, at which point, you know, after that, the battery did drop further to 40%. And another shout out here to Mark, who suggested I try GeForce Now for, for online gaming. That cost me 90 quid though, mate. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was worth it. If I don't play, my son will play and he'll be happy with that. I did play a couple of games though. My internet in the studio here isn't, isn't the greatest, but when I tried at home, it was much better. When I was gaming using GeForce Now, the, the RAM only increased for about one gig, which initially surprised me, but then I realized, oh, it's an online game as well. And all the processing is happening somewhere in the cloud, right? But the temperature surprised me, right? Because it didn't go up and you know, it didn't overheat at all. And I guess, again, that that's another benefit of using an online platform to play games. The other thing I realized was the speaker quality on this. Typically, you probably use headphones for gaming, but the speakers on the M2 MacBook Air really surprised me, you know, when I was gaming. I haven't changed from the default settings in GE Force, but it was pretty loud as well and very crisp. Watching content like Netflix or YouTube on the browser didn't really do much to the memory. You know, of course, having loads of them would. I guess I could have worked harder up until this point in the evening. But you know, the machine had been on since 9.30 a.m. I then worked on some emails, you know, some mind mapping software as well for another hour or so, and then went home. At home, I did another hour of browsing socials, you know, doing some online shopping and watched a bit more content. The battery at 10 p.m. did go to about 15%, which I think is pretty good. I mean, considering how much I've done, it's actually excellent. I did push this machine super hard all day long with plenty of multitasking, running some pretty intensive workflows here. I really can't complain. There wasn't a single time using this machine where I regretted choosing this configuration. The battery held up pretty well, though I felt that I was really pushing it, right? Probably a little bit harder than most people would in, in most days. Again, I wasn't worried at all because by the time it was low in terms of battery, I was already home and I could charge it overnight anyway, ready for the day after. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. And I made this playlist here that I think you like too. There are nearly 200 videos now on the channel, so I hope you like one of them. Hope to see you soon.